I'm with uh, Bogat Shuntust, and we're here at LifeGate Rehabilitation. Now, Bogat, what is LifeGate? LifeGate is an institution for the rehabilitation of children and young people with impairments. And when was the organization founded, and why was it founded? The organization actually uh, came out of uh, another organization um, which provided a home for disabled and blind men located right here in Bejala. And uh, in the year 1987, um, this home for men was slowly changed into a rehabilitation center. That means um, the people in the house, around 30 men, were actually not doing much. They were eating, drinking, and watching TV sometimes. And just a few of them went outside for some activities. So um, we found them all quite in, in a well shape with some uh, physical impairment. So we asked the question, why we are not starting to teach you something which you can be able after that to make your living maybe from it. So some of the people were very happy about this idea. Others didn't like it. They wanted to be served. Um, and they left the institution. And out of this um, new approach, we started uh, with uh, a very single sewing machine to teach somebody sewing on a sewing machine. And, um, and other professions, one by one, were following. And then, um, beside a living place, we provided the people with a vocational training opportunity. And are there a lot of physically and mentally disabled children and youth in the Bethlehem area? Um, this question is um, not easy to answer because we have um, we have actually n not many official statistics done by the government or even by organizations. But um, we know that the problem in the society with impairments is actually the problem of the marriages within the same bigger families. And we have many uh, genetic um, problems and defects which lead to impairment. And um, and this pattern, let's say, in society that that you marry within the family is is very very common. So in in many families, unfortunately, we do not have just one child with a problem. We have several children, and um, so um, it's, it th there might be in all the country also a hidden figure of people where we we don't know about them. But I would say there are almost. Um, eight to ten percent of the population having a kind of a physical problem. So do you think there needs to be more education about marriage, closer marriage in the community? Um, yes, of course, we do that in LifeGate. We try to encourage the young mothers of our uh, children and mothers who especially have girls and boys to, to be aware that it's much better to look maybe later when, when they are in the age for a husband a little bit far. But you know, this old tradition that you marry um, in the past in the same tribe is also something we know from the Bible. Um, I think we are familiar with the story of Jacob. When Jacob wanted to get married, he went all the way down to his uncle Laban and he married two of his cousins. Yeah, First the one he didn't want so much, Leah, and then Rachel he was in love with, but it were his cousins. And also in the tribes of Israel, like in the Arabian tribes, marriage within the tribe was the normal common habit. And that's because, um, let's say, the children are born in the tribes, the tribe grows, you know the, the good name of the girl or of the man. Um, very often in the, in the poorer areas, still today in the country, the families are arranging those marriages. It's not that the people, the young people can decide themselves, especially not the women. Now, there's quite a lot of uh, children's homes here in the Bethlehem area, but is there much for youth, those who've left school and maybe 18, 19 years of age? Yeah, yeah this is um, really a problem. Um, we always say in Bethlehem area, and this is maybe because Bethlehem is the, the birthplace of Christ, that's why many people settled here, um, especially Christian organizations, um, we have quite a few organizations who, who are giving people with impairments let's say, a nice daycare approach. But uh, very, very few have the development of children and young people with impairments on their agenda. Um, and, and here maybe life kit differs very much. We are not a place to keep children or young people. We are a pure development place. They come to us for a certain time, but then the aim is that they will make the living 
m hopefully independently outside in the society. So we prepare people to become independent, even to be able to take care of their own needs by their own work, by the work of their own hands. And you're also helping Christian and Muslims here? You're not just helping one or the other? Christians are less than 2% of the Palestinian population. So, and um, as we understand the Bible, we are supposed to love everybody. doesn't matter um, what religion he has, what color his skin is. Um, Jesus told us to accept and love people like they are. So, of course, in LifeGate, um, the picture of the society, 98% Muslim population, is also almost in LifeGate. There's one little difference. Our staff people are mainly Christians. Why? The Christian minority um, does not see much or does not have much of a hope for the future. So they try, many of them try to follow relatives who already settled abroad. So the Christian population in the birthplace of Jesus is declining every year. And the Muslim population gets bigger and bigger. That's why in LifeGate we would like to give Christian people a working place that they're able to stay, that they have an income, they can raise their children and have a decent life here in the country. And the other thing, we are a Christian organization. That means we share our faith with everybody who comes in um, we would like that people see the love we have to each other and ask questions, and then we have good answers for them. And that's why uh, we are we having almost 95% um, Christian staff in the institution. And uh, what are you doing with the children and youth here in LifeGate? Yeah, um, we started off some almost uh, 20 years ago um, with young adults by, as I said before, as creating a vocational training center and today we teach 10 professions for young people in the age between 15 and 25 and the aim is that after two three years of learning here in life gates that they're able to work outside in the society now we saw then for for many years that we are with um, uh, with taking people in the age of 15 quite late if we would reach the same people 10 years before we could maybe um, um, set them up in directions they wouldn't need us in the age of 15 anymore. So we, um, And another thing which we saw um, is that the women who give birth or who have a child with an impairment have a very hard situation. The bigger family almost blames the woman that the child is impaired. Um, even the genetic problems could come from the line of the husband. But they never confess that this is uh, could be like that. It's always the woman. Um, as I said before, they sometimes have more than one child with a problem. So these uh, women are carrying uh, often a very heavy burden. In LifeKit, we decided um, 10 years ago to give one day a week where these mothers with impaired children can come to the institution and have a morning for themselves. They can talk to each other. They can rest. They can uh, do something they like, to eat a good breakfast together, to, uh, to listen to music, to have relaxation, uh, things like that. Out of this mother meeting, very soon the mothers wanted to know more about the background of the problems of the children. So we taught many mothers in programs, in courses, um, what, is, what is the problem with the child and how you can help the child in the home. And mm, today I can say we trained um, along the years many mothers to become our partners to um, develop the children in the home environment. So today in LifeGate we say the parents and our staff, they are the developing team or development team for the child. And we don't let the parents just uh, drop the child in the institution and, and go away. And um, out of this um, n now mother's meeting, um, then the, the kindergarten, the development kindergarten was created because this mother didn't give us a rest till we started a daily program for their children. So today we have 25 children in a developing kindergarten. In the future, we are able to have 50. And, um, and now the, the missing link actually between the kindergarten and the vocational training is the school. But about this I talk in a minute. Yes, I was just going to ask you, you have a school here. What do the kids learn here in the school? Yeah. Um, now, the school y is yet existing just in two classes. Why? Because many children um, grow out of the kindergarten that are between 6 and 10 years old. Um, now, there isn't a school for the development of children with impairments yet in the Palestinian territories. So actually, LifeKid has no chance than, than building a school up, than creating a school. And now... 
um, in the new location we are right now building, um, there is one floor meant for 100 children with special needs um, so that the children who grow out of our kindergarten but also children who come in in the, in the certain ages um, they can have a school where they can develop and we would like to have very much also non-impaired children in our school um, to create an example in the society it's possible that children learn together because we, we um, tried over the years and with quite success to integrate our physically impaired children in mainstream schools um, and we found in some schools open doors for our children and, um, and it was a very nice experience but still many, many schools do not want to take children with impairments because the facility is not ready for it, they don't have the bathrooms, uh, they, they, have many, they, they say they have many problems with that. Of course we can solve many of those problems. Actually it is the parents of non-impaired children who put an obstacle on our children and say to the school, if these children enter the school they will take their children to another school. So we, we would like to create an example in our school um, that impaired and non-impaired children can learn very well together and this, can, can, this model can be transferred, hopefully, to many Palestinian schools after that. That would be really fantastic to see. You also have a workshop. What are you teaching the, the youth in the workshop? Yeah. In the workshop, we teach handcraft um, vocations, which are pretty much needed in the country. You know, we're talking in the Palestinian territories from around 40% unemployment. The Bethlehem area is quite well off because many tourists coming here and many people are somehow involved in tourism or in services for tourists, so they have work. But if you go five kilometers from here to the countryside, you find villages where maybe 50%, 60% of the men, who are the providers usually of the family, will not find any, um, any long-term job. They are daily workers. They, they go somewhere in the morning and they hope they are picked up maybe by somebody to have a, a daily activity and are paid in the evening. But very often they come home and they didn't find anything. And this is, is a very desperate situation in, in this society. So we do not want to add our impaired people to a labor market where they later don't find work. So we look very well in the very first <coughs> meeting um, when we're going to visit the person in the home, what, um, what is in the village, what is in the next town, available on working places, other workshops, other little companies, um, how the transportation problem can be solved. And while we are seeing the whole situation, or does the family have maybe a, a bigger building and we can open the young person after that a workshop in the house, which we do quite often. Um, all this we put in consideration before we decide with the young person and the, par and the family and the, um, the parents what we're going to teach because we want to, to be almost 90% uh, sure before we start that later they can work in this profession, hopefully in their village, but often also maybe in, in the neighbor uh, town. Now, of course, when you're doing, uh, when the, the children, the youth are making products and things like that, you're able to sell these products. What sort of things are you selling? Yeah. <coughs> I did not complete uh, the, the question before, but so we, we teach, uh, I, I just give you an idea, we teach shoe and leather repair. We have a carpentry shop. Uh, we work with olive wood, which is very famous here from, from the, for the country, um, olive wood products. Um, by the way, we also produce olive oil. And um, we have um, a sewing uh, uh, shop, a knitting uh, shop, and Palestinian embroidery. And, um, and ceramic works. In the future, we are able to add to it computer training. We would like to teach young men haircutting. And um, also, we will have an industrial laundry, which um, um, can uh, wash the bed sheets for the hotels in Bethlehem area. Now, um, the products we produce in LifeKit are actually mainly gifts. Many of them are connected somehow with Christmas. Bethlehem, Christmas, um, olive wood nativity sets. This is a very famous thing. We do it as well in LifeGate. But we do have also many products which are for daily use, like, like, like salad servers, spoons, um, things for the household, things for your desk in your office, um, very nice things. Embroidery work as well. We're able to do all kinds of, for example, book covers for Bibles, for songbooks. Um, we have special bags. We have a very nice uh, touch book for little children, 
uh, which is very unique with motifs here from the country and um, and nice pottery uh, ceramic uh, items so these are the things which we produce and as we do not be compatible here on the market because we want to pay our our young people fair salaries we sell most of the products in Europe M Germany England um, a little bit in France now you're about to move into a new facility. Uh, what's going to be happening there? Look, uh, Paul, since many years we are working in rented facilities. And the truth is I never wanted to build a house because I, I I'm, I'm, I'm love my work. And I, um, we did, I think, a quite a good job with the help of our Lord every day in rented facilities. But then we were several times approached by organizations in Germany um, saying your rent you pay and your running costs <coughs> are so high, did you ever consider building something for yourself? And um, and th there was a s uh, an amount of money provided. And then when, when this happened, I said, so, Lord, okay, if you want us to build, then we will start. We are not lazy people. And we looked for a piece of land. It took us two years to find a suitable piece of land and the budget to pay for it. And then the the funds, let's say, one by one came in. And still we are building, uh, let's say, with little amounts of money coming in. And the building is far from be finished, unfortunately. But uh, the good news is parts of the building are already finished. The kindergarten is already um, um, moved in and is working. The administration will follow, the therapy will follow, and then the workshops. Um, so um, in the new facilities, we have much, much more room than we do have now in the here in the rented place. And, of course, we, um, we could build the house um, in a way that it really suits our work. Um, I, my first sentence to the architects was, I would like that you, uh, you, you um, make us or you, you draw us a building where also already the architecture gives people some hope that they are curious and would like to come in and see what's inside. And, you know, so uh, we tried our best, let's say, um, which was not easy with local, with the local mind, let's say, to make a house which is attractive, um, which has some colors, of course, and where children and also young people, but also adults, like to stay in um, and like to, uh, like to receive the program Life Kit can offer. But the building is not the main thing. The building is from stones and from glass and from iron. What is most important is that inside the building there are living stones. And this is our team. And that the people who are coming uh, out of this building, that they are alive and they have courage and self-esteem and knowledge in their profession um, that they can do something. By the way, at the same time we teach the profession, we teach them also Arabic language, we teach them math, general knowledge. We're looking in the medical um, problems they have. We introduce them to... Um, specialized doctors in Israel and in here in, in Bethlehem. And um, so we say in LifeGate, we, the approach of LifeGate is a holistic approach. We look at the child, at the young person from all the sides, and even sometimes we develop the family situation. We do in income generating projects in the families who have nothing, let's say, um, to pay for their children, who cannot help any child, so we help also the families that they that they gain a little income, and um, we would like very much that um, the young people when they uh, when they come in, they, we accept them how they are, and very often, you no know, impaired people in this society, no one looked at them. They have no self-esteem. They they feel you know no one wants me. No one uh, th uh, thinks that I can do anything in my life. So in life, we, are, we, we say you are welcome, you are a lovely person, you are um, a creation of our Lord with, with all your problems, and now we need you as a partner to work with us because we cannot do it for you, we can do it with you. And, um, and I think the approach in life is often one-to-one. -one. one therapist works with, with one young uh, person or with one child. We work with the parents. And uh, it's, it's really um, very nice to see how they change in a very short while. They, they, they can look in your eyes, they're happy. And, and, and this is, let's say, the basic we can, we can work. Great, sounds fantastic. Yeah. How should the general public be treating disabled people out on the street? Yeah. 
Look, um, I just said it. Um, um, in Bethlehem area, I would say it's a little bit different than in the countryside because some institutions are located here, so people with impairments belong more to the picture in the streets. You can see them. Some of our people, um, they drive electric scooters or wheelchairs, so they, they are in the traffic being seen, yeah, and they're coming here every day. So here, let's say, there is in the, in the population an, an, an more an openness because the people are around. In the villages, we have the situation that they are all that they are often hidden in the houses. You know, we find in villages people they were never um, they were never taken to any family event, to any wedding, or to any uh, anything outside the building. They even even we were in houses and and we haven't seen all the people with impairments. They they were hidden from us, even from our team. So we encourage very much people. Give, uh, give. Um, this, these people belong to us. They are a part of us. They are part of you, of your family. Give them a chance. Um, help, help us, and help yourself to discover what they are able to do. Um, many people, I think, they don't mean it even bad. They are helpless. They are helpless because they don't know how to treat them. They don't know how to develop them. And there is another thing. They are afraid that the non-impaired girls in the family will be not married if, if people outside know that there is a disabled person in the family. So they hide the people. Yeah? Um, here we do a lot of awareness meeting. We are um, in the countryside, in, in the north, in the Jenin area, in the, in the south, in the Hebron area, with, with teams where we um, go in 80 families with mentally retarded children and we develop these children with our therapists in the homes, and we teach the mothers how to do that, and we bring parents together to parents' meetings, and in, in many of these locations, parents start to be um, taking initiative and, and meet themselves alone after a life kid, after one year, goes to another place, and, um, and in, in, in one village, the parents uh, were even succeeding making a little kindergarten out of their own initiative in the village uh, for the children. So something is going on. Awareness meeting done by LifeGate. We invite all the people, um, let's say, in the government, the teachers in the area, um, the mayor, um, the people who, who are having responsibilities to learn about um, our work and to, to give people with an impairment a chance. So I would say there is something on the move, something is changing, it goes very slowly, but I think also in Europe it took us some time um, till uh, the approach was changed, and also, also today it's not yet perfect. Now you're from Germany, why are you here in the Palestinian Authority? Yeah, this is a, a, a good question. Let's say like this. Um, I, many years I was traveling to the country and I lived a part of my life in the country before um, the work of LifeKit was introduced to me. And um, so it wasn't, um, I think Israel, um, the Palestinian territories for a believer are not a strange country because you, you already know it from the Bible and you, you're curious to see it. And, and then when I came here several times, I mean, I, I, I met people and the country became very, very uh, close to me. And then when I was asked um, from a German friend, actually, who was in charge before me, um, I um, didn't need to think very long to say this is a challenge I would like to take on. And, um, and I think um, along the way, um, our Lord um, confirmed this decision um, several times. And um, yeah, and the, the years passed just like that, but still I get up in the morning and there are, no, there are many new things to come in every day and now especially connected with the new building. Um, the work will hopefully uh, grow and we can, we can help many more people than uh, we could in, in the past. So um, it's a place I'm, I'm, I'm put in, I'm, I'm called to, and as long as God wants me here, I will fill it out with his help. And finally, what's your prayer for LifeGate here and for disabled people around the Bethlehem area? Um, our prayer is that, um, and we, we start our, our week every Monday here with the word of the Bible. My prayer is that the people, even they come from Muslim background, um, that they, they receive this hope um, which we have, or which just I think Jesus Christ can give and and um, we, we share this with the people, but we cannot... I believe that even a Muslim person can stay on the outside, let's say, um, can um, a, a Muslim... Uh, but, but what is in his inside um, can be something else. 
um, because you know many Muslims cannot officially um, go to a, to another uh, religion, and this is also not not our aim that they do that. But I believe that that what we have to share is something which no one can take away from them. This is also our experience. So my prayer is that that many people will be really connected to this source of power and love we have in our life. And um, and in the society, let's say that society is opening more up um, for um, people with impairments and that the, the parents and we in LifeGate, we plant something in the heart of the children which is love and understanding um, and we, we, we do build many bridges between Palestinians and Israelis. Let's say the second the second um, main um, aim of LifeGate is, um, the first aim is rehabilitation and the second aim is to build bridges between people. And we, we do that all the time and have very good experience. And I see uh, that um, peace in this country might be, might be possible um, if just we plant the right seed in the heart of the children in the Palestinian and the Israeli side. Okay, Bogart, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.